Well, good morning, everybody. Mike Rains here with Remax Terrasol here in the Huntington Beach and Orange County market of California. Today is Tuesday, April 19th, and I'm here to give a, a little bit of a market update because we have some, some changes uh, coming in the real estate market, and I want to keep you abreast of it, all of what's going on. So here we are uh, at the end of the first quarter into the spring market. Um, we're still in a situation where we have multiple offers on homes. Uh, buyers are still frustrated. Uh, we still have a red hot seller's market, uh, but there's starting to be some signs that are changing in the market that are probably overdue and we need those in the market. So I, I just want to be able to share with you why, why those things are happening and just share with you that yes, while today we still have low inventory, which driving that that uh, market hotness on that. We still have a red hot seller's market. And that's defined of, as, as days on market of anything under 60 days uh, to sell. And right now we're at 23. And that's still in the red hot seller's category. Six months is a balanced market. So just to give you that kind of perspective on that. Uh, right now, there's 2,241 homes in escrow, uh, which means that there's more homes in escrow than there are available inventory. The available inventory that we have right now is 1,732 homes. That's homes, townhomes, mobile homes, um, senior parks, things like that, housing. All of that adds up in the Orange County area to 1,732 homes. So, so what's changing? So what we wanna look at is, is like what are the trends and, and every couple of weeks, uh, we try to put something together that would help you to indicate seeing what these little trends are. So since it's subtle change, it changes over time, we want to see what's happening. So uh, one of the things that's starting to happen is that 15% uh, of all the homes that are on the market, that 1,732, 15% of them, which is not a lot, but it's still some, are starting to make some price changes to the reduction side. So that means they, they went out the gates a little too high. Uh, sometimes sellers arbitrarily want to set their pricing because they think their home's worth more or something like that, or they're trying to get more um, out of their home and they go out too strong. Um, and, and the market kind of pulls it back when it sits there for, you know, 10 days and they're like, well, I thought everything was selling in two days. And while that's true, if you price your home too high, the market's going to bring that back. So sellers, it's very important that they price the home properly to start with. Um, the other thing is, is buyers are uh, catching um, uh, and not willing to stretch as much. So, you know, when, when a buyer comes out there, they're seeing this price is like, you know, like where do they come up with that price? And so they're starting to catch on to this trend and they're not willing to stretch like they were at one point in the past. Uh, so that's, that's number one. Number two is that the total number of homes going into escrow is lower than it was last year. So while it's still a very low number, um, it, it's, it's the, the inventory is, is not as much as, as what's in escrow, but the number of homes going in escrow is slightly down from where it was last year. And that's partly in due to the, the quick rise in interest rates that we've experienced. Um, and so we're seeing like that having a, a little bit of an effect for a buyer at, at the end where they're just barely able to, to qualify for a mortgage and they're kind of dropping out as the interest rates rise. That is what's going to happen is, is that those buy points in the lower ends in that condo range, uh, things are starting to, to make buyers go, you know what, I, I, maybe I should just wait it out a little bit longer, which I don't think is the right move. So, but if, if that's what they need to do, that's what they need to do. So the number of new escrows uh, last month decreased from 2,286 homes to 2,241 homes. That's down only 2%, uh, but that is the first drop of the year. And every year it drops because the inventory peaks and so does the, the number of new escrows. Every year it does that, uh, but not at this time of the year. We're here we are at April 19th and we're already seeing that. So that could mean that there's already a peak that's starting to happen in the demand side, not necessarily. So time will tell, we'll be keeping an eye on that. Uh, but because that is the first drop of the year, it normally should be up 4% in April, not down 2%. So sellers should really pay attention to this uh, because it's going to make a difference how they price their home. If they're just stretching and coming up with an arbitrary number, um, they're going to get reeled in by the market because buyers are not willing to stretch as much as they used to. So lastly, the expected market times 
went from 20 days to sell the home now to 23 days. So that doesn't seem like a, a lot and it's really not. 23 days is still like a real red hot seller's market because it's under 60 days to sell that property when a normal balanced market, the, the power between the buyers and sellers are balanced at six months. Anything on beyond that becomes a buyer's market. And then when it goes way, way, way out there, that's when it's a red hot buyer's market. We're nowhere near that today. And so don't run out and just you know, start making low ball offers if you're a buyer, uh, because you're going to get really frustrated on that. Um, so still what's happening is that if it's priced right, you're still getting multiple offers. You're still getting a little bit of appreciation on that price. We're still predicting, you know, an 8% rise in, in the values because we just don't have enough homes for sale. And the interest rates have kind of spiked up, but they've kind of leveled off a little bit too. So if you're in the market, now's a good time to lock in that rate um, out in the future, it might spike a little bit more and it might come back down. If we head into a recession and a couple of years out, you're going to see interest rates go to the other side where they start lowering the interest rates. Um, and as you know, over, since the pandemic and since before then, the, the government has come in and they were a bond purchaser, which made the bond prices go down or up rather and the interest rates down artificially. So normally a, a, a normal market interest rate between four and 5%, that, that was great. That was a normal rate. But because the government jumped in there and started buying those bonds, uh, that is what pulled those pricing down um, on the interest rates artificially. And it made it for a great opportunity for people to buy. And that's why you've seen such a demand spike. And now we're just kind of getting back into some normal interest rates because the government is now selling off that portfolio and they're doing some other tightening measures. So we're going to see that have an effect on that, but it's not time to panic or anything like that because here's the deal. You have to live somewhere. So whether you're paying rents and if you haven't noticed, rents have been going up as well. You should be buying a house to put that money to work for you because I always say you're either building your dream or you're building someone else's dream. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, drop a comment in, in the section below there. Let me know what's going on with you and how I can help you. And as always, hit the, the subscribe button and like this this video for more content like this coming out in the future. And I uh, hope you guys have a really great day and I hope you had a great Easter. Take care.